Gretchen Bakke, The Grid, The Fraying Wires Between Americans and Our Energy Future. Welcome to the captivating world of The Grid, The Fraying Wires Between Americans and Our Energy Future by Gretchen Bakke. This summary dives into the fascinating history of the U.S. electricity grid, its development, and the struggles it currently faces. Delve into the early stages of power distribution through parallel circuits, and learn about the visionary Samuel Insull and the dream of monopolizing the electricity industry. Uncover key events such as the oil embargo and the Energy Policy Act that have left lasting effects on the grid. As we explore present-day challenges like aging infrastructure and the controversial concept of smart grids, prepare to gain insights into possible solutions and a more resilient electric future. The power of electricity. Electricity has revolutionized the way we live, and its impact on society is immeasurable. The first electric grids came online in the 1870s with the invention of the battery powered light by Father Joseph Neri. This breakthrough sparked a major transformation, and by 1879, San Francisco had its own lighting grid. However, early grids were linked in a series causing a system-wide blackout if one bulb malfunctioned. Thomas Edison's discovery of electricity taking all available paths led him to invent the parallel circuit, avoiding this problem. By 1892, streetlights wired in parallel circuits began to proliferate, and the power of electric light was ubiquitous. The ability to work longer hours enabled companies to do more business, and this led to economic growth worldwide. The power of electricity continues to be embraced today, powering homes, businesses, and even electric cars. It's difficult to imagine life without it. The Emergence of the AC Power Grid The discovery of alternating current, AC, in 1887 revolutionized the power industry by enabling the transmission of electricity over long distances and the creation of a more extensive power grid. Prior to this, Independent electric systems owned by various entities left cities entangled in a web of wires. AC's ability to transmit high voltages with smaller losses through transformers made it possible to supply power to cities several miles away. One example is the Cataract Construction Company, which built a power plant at Niagara Falls in 1891 and supplied electricity to the city of Buffalo, 20 miles away. The invention of AC was a game-changer as it paved the way for the modern power grid system we rely on today. The Challenge of Electricity Storage In the late 1800s, businessman Samuel Insull aimed to create a monopoly in the electricity industry, but he faced a unique challenge, electricity could not be stored. Unlike oil and steel industries, power plants needed to generate enough electricity to meet the highest demand at all times, even if that demand only occurred at certain times of the day. This led to power plants being underutilized during non-peak hours. Insel devised a solution to this challenge, which will be discussed in the subsequent part of the book. During this time, the U.S. was dominated by monopolies such as Standard Oil Trust, American Tobacco, and AT&T. With over 1,000 municipal electricity companies in the country by 1907, Insull saw an opportunity to establish a monopoly, but faced a unique obstacle due to the nature of electricity. Insull's Monopolization of the Electricity Industry The book narrates how Samuel Insull, facing a storage problem, discovered that building a massive, diverse customer base is the solution to inefficient power usage. To attract a broad range of customers, he cut down the prices drastically, leading to a significant increase in customers. Insul continued to diversify by selling off-peak electricity to industrial customers, enabling him to achieve economies of scale. Although the average price per unit sold dropped significantly, Insul increased his overall revenues due to the surplus electricity he sold. Other companies soon adopted Insul's strategies in their respective states and cities, ultimately leading to 10 holding businesses monopolizing the American electricity industry by the 1920s. But, unfortunately, the monopolization didn't last. The Inefficiency of Coal-Powered Plants Coal power plants' technology peaked at 50% efficiency, 
with most plants only running at around 30% efficiency due to the laws of physics and expensive maintenance costs. In an attempt to increase efficiency, electricity companies moved towards oil in the 1950s and 60s but were hit by the oil embargo in 1973, causing petroleum prices to skyrocket. This led to electricity companies raising their prices, resulting in dissatisfied customers. The Oil Embargo and Energy Conservation The 1970s oil embargo resulted in a spike in electricity prices and increased public awareness about energy conservation. Prior to this event, the electric companies had always encouraged ever greater consumption for increased production, lower prices, and bigger plants, even influencing household appliance usage. However, the energy crisis caused people to become aware of their energy consumption and learn how to conserve. Schoolchildren were even taught to turn off lights, use heat only as necessary, and wear thicker sweaters. This newfound awareness played a role in Jimmy Carter's presidency, where energy reform was a central theme. Legislation was passed, such as the Department of Energy Formation in 1977 and the National Energy Act in 1978, promoting energy conservation and alternative sources, such as solar, wind, and hydro. This legislation also required utility companies to encourage consumers to use less energy and insulate buildings. Aging Infrastructure and Electricity Company Woes The aging infrastructure of the electricity grid poses a huge problem in the present day. Even minor malfunctions can have devastating consequences, as seen in the Davis Best nuclear power station blackout in 2003 where 50 million people were left without power, causing a loss of $6 billion in business revenues. The Energy Policy Act of 1992 proved to be a significant challenge for electricity companies in terms of organization and finances. For instance, First Energy, the Ohio utility that managed the Davis Best plant, found itself in dire straits financially due to the new legislation and wasn't able to maintain the plant, leading to the discovery of rusting sections that went untreated for years. The plant experienced cooling equipment malfunctions in 2002, where only a thin liner prevented a coolant tank from bursting, which could have been catastrophic. Smart grids and the issue of privacy Smart grids are modernized versions of traditional electric grids that employ digital technology to enhance efficiency by monitoring consumption precisely. Despite their useful functions, many Americans are uneasy with smart meters as the devices are seen as a form of surveillance. Studies have found that with the data collected by smart meters, it's possible to detect what electrical appliances are in use and which TV channels are on at any given time. Such findings, however, show that the privacy concerns of consumers are legitimate. For utility companies, smart meters are an essential tool that aids in revenue stream management. Digital meters are valuable in helping companies collect a massive volume of precise data on the electricity usage patterns of consumers. The digital meters quickly identify the areas affected by power outages and help to determine peak demand times, enabling the utility companies to take action quickly, save time and costs. Furthermore, digital meters allow utility companies to control electricity use during peak hours of electricity consumption, encouraging the public to conserve energy and avoid having to activate older plants that are dangerous to operate and maintain, adding to the public health risks. Microgrids, a bright future for energy resilience. Hurricane Sandy, which affected close to 50 million people, highlighted the importance of energy resilience. To fortify the grid itself and reduce the number of people affected by outages, microgrids, or islands, that can run independently are being created. They need to be adaptable and capable of running on a variety of energy sources, making diversification key. There are already 300 microgrids in the U.S., with more under construction. In conclusion, the grid by Gretchen Bakke enlightens us on the past, present, and future of the U.S. electric grid. From its early days with Edison's invention of parallel circuits and Insel's ambitious goal of monopolizing the industry, to the modern issues of efficiency, fossil fuel reliance, and aging infrastructure, the electricity grid has come a long way. Confronting these challenges and embracing newer technologies like smart grids and microgrids can help develop a more resilient, 
and efficient electric future. As we look forward, it's essential to learn from history and adapt to the evolving needs of our society, ensuring electricity remains the powerful life-changing force it has always been.